Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a very sweet word to bring to you this morning, a very happy message, let's put it that way, from Father. And it's Sunday, November 29th. It's 9.13 a.m. This is take two, because I made a mistake. Anyway, it was received by hand, let's see, let me go back to the top. Handmaid of the Most High, and she says, um, I asked the Lord to give me a happy word, and this is what he spoke. She received it on November 28th at uh, 5 p.m. To my beloved bride, my heart is full of love for you. You have stood strong in the many storms that have beset you. You have cried out to me with a broken heart for those who are lost, those who are murdered for their inconvenience, and those who are persecuted for their faith in me. You see the bullies and the evil ones' agenda from far off, and warn others, though you are openly mocked and ridiculed, but you have not wavered. I love your steadfast faith in me. I love how you seek me to sustain you in the darkest hours of the morning. You do, you do not ignore my soft words to you. You are sober and vigilant, and even when you tire and cry that you can't take much more, it's not out of anger at me, but at the evil one who deserves your anger. He is destroying people and leading them to darker places, and you see it. How wonderful it is to have a child like you my beloved, one who comes running to me with their pain, one who, okay, one who, whose, maybe should be whose understanding that only at the cross is their healing. Yeah, that should be whose. One whose understanding that only at the cross is their healing. Oh, my beloved, believe me when I say I do suffer when you do. I am your biggest fan. I root with you as does my angels to encourage you forward to the finish line. Soon, beloved, the prayers will cease from your heart. You are coming home. Hallelujah! I rejoice and sorrow at the same time because the disasters that were foretold will begin. They have been planned by your enemy and he is so eager to undo all the good done for those living on the earth. He is the destroyer, and destroy he will. I will see many before me on the day that comes much sooner than many expect. At that time, the lands of the earth will see profound destruction and millions of lives will be lost forever. Some, in fact, many of those will be lost, and their judgment is at hand. Many of my own will also die as a result and come to be with me for eternity. That's good news. That happens right after we're out of here. 
I rejoice at those who will join me, but will also experience deep sorrow at the lost ones, those who never came to me. That is why I have sent so many warnings, but many have dismissed it as smoke and mirrors, murmurings of religious weirdos needing medication, and other disparaging words because they are so deceived and their eyes are darkened. What a shame. I know many of you are very sad as well that so many will not be joining you in heaven. Take these last few hours to pray for them. Ask for me to direct you in those prayers. Don't pray for ease in their lives, but my conviction Pray that they humble themselves before my son's cross and repent. I love you. My heart is full of joy to see you, to let you know how deep my love is for you for the moment that you cannot fully understand my love while residing within your earthly suits, but to be revealed completely when you are in your glorified body. Remember that nothing important is usually easy. Dark moments might seize you, but it is all temporary. Do not ignore these words, for they are truth. I come soon for my bride, so make sure you have a lamp full of oil, and in parentheses it says, my precious Holy Spirit, close parentheses, to keep you focused on the last tasks. Kisses on your heads, my dears. For you are such precious children to me. I love you. See you soon, your loving father. And then it says, and handmaid of the most high. She gives Acts 2, 18. I know that one. For in the end days, it's 17, 18. <coughs> <coughs> For in the end days, I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, and on my handmaidens and on my, on my man, on my servants, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. That's in the Bible, Acts 2, 17, 18. And then he, she puts Psalm 37, 30, which I don't know that one. I'll look it up. Thirty-seven thirty. is that right? Let me make sure. Yeah, 37, 30, King James. The mouth of the righteous speak, speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. So see, we got to tell people there's judgment. We can't be candy coating our messages to people. All right, then she gives 1 Peter 5.14 from the Amplified Bible. Salute got to find my sweet spot. This writing is smaller. Salute one another with a kiss of love, the symbol of mutual affection. To all of you that are in Christ Jesus the Messiah, may there be peace, every kind of peace and blessing 
especially peace with God and freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. He's saying freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. Okay, amen, so be it. All right, Jeremiah 31, 3, from the 21st century King James Version. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Matthew 28, 19 through 20, King James Version. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, kind of try to remember, Matthew is being, has been said by many, was written to the Jews. Mark to the left behind church and Luke to the bride, or those who go first, the first fruits. That's why in Luke it says, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. The whole end time prophecy thing is worded differently. So when you go back and you compare them all, that's why in Matthew it says, at the end of this tribulation, I will do thus and so. I can't quote it. But it makes it sound like it's a post-trib rapture. Or how can it be post-trib rapture when Jesus comes after the tribulation? Then he rescues the Jews and starts his millennial reign. He doesn't take them back to heaven. You see? Okay. So... Well, it's got 1,095 views already. Okay, so that, that's the end of that one. So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this message and pray that it goes up. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of us and over our devices and <clears throat> all of our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.